There we go. Hola, hola. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel once again. Christian Landaeta here, welcoming a very, very, very uh, dear musician from the days when I was uh, working at Futuro FM and also Concierto FM, two very relevant radio stations here in Santiago, Chile. And we think that we even met with Mr. John Jowett. Welcome, John, to my channel. Finally, we can do this. <laughs> hello, Christian. Good to be here. Yeah, thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, good to see you after so long. You know, I've been uh, wondering, uh, really time is something so weird. I, I still, it's difficult for me to understand that I was playing your music and uh, it was like 25 years ago or something. <laughs> yeah, so. I totally get that, I totally understand. <laughs> yeah, maybe time is just imaginary. What do you think about that? <laughs> because you still have the, yeah, you always have the energy, huh? Well, it's it's a strange concept, isn't it? It is that thing that we all look back and think, oh, that only happened yesterday. And then you realize just how long ago it actually happened. <laughs> yeah. Let me show you this. Uh, maybe. You know this. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, this was back in 1999. That's hard to believe. Uh, and this was this this picture was taken at the Musicland record shop owned yeah. by a good friend of mine, Eduardo Balas. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was when you came and gave two shows at the then called uh, Providencia Theater. Now it's called differently. But wow. then you brought, I think you were doing the Subterranean tour. Do you have yes. any recollections on this? On this yes, I, I do. I do have an, a whole range of recollections from that. I mean, we, we came down from uh, the States. I remember um, we should have flown direct. And there was a problem with the uh, flights. We ended up getting stuck in Miami overnight and oh. uh, uh, coming down after that. But yeah, it was just uh, um, amazing to be able to travel to South America with the band and to have such a fantastic reception from people in Chile and Argentina. You know, I think it's the only time the band has been there, but it was wonderful to me. So, you know, I'm a big IQ fan. <laughs> and really? so it was wonderful to meet other big IQ fans. <laughs> so you, you visited Argentina because I was wondering where else you had been that time. So you say Argentina and Chile only? I was, uh, as I said, played in America, then uh, Chile and Argentina, and then uh, back. And I remember the flight back over the Andes. It was one of those, you know, uh, don't hold on to the chair, put your arms in the air. Woo! <laughs> it's like a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, that, it's like that. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, well, um, I had to say that uh, I was I realized after reading some some things that we are just uh, I'm just nine months uh, older than you. I was born in, <laughs> in May in February, in May 60, 1960. So it was, it's also amazing. Now, uh, I should have said that at the beginning. Congratulations for the many, many and well deserved awards uh, you've reserved over, uh, you've gotten over the years. Do you have any remarks on that? How can anyone almost monopolize so many awards? It's really amazing. <laughs> well, I, I get my mom to write in a lot. She's very good. <laughs> no, I, I think it, it's wonderful. I mean, the, the awards with Classic Rock Society were brilliant because, you know, they were voted for by uh, the fans. It wasn't, you know, critics or anything. It was fans with, with who they like. So, I, yeah, it was amazing, absolutely astonishing to, to do that. And I'm sure it wasn't about... You know, there are so many better musicians than me, so many better bass players. But, it's you know, it's it's nice to think that people think you're a nice person. <laughs> I'm happy uh, with that. <laughs> there, must be, there must be a reason for that. You know, uh, I was just thinking that there are so many uh, bass players and so, and especially new bands. I was reading about Hey Jester, that uh, where, where you got your, you found your guitar player for Rain these days. And I'm um, really amazed. Uh, it's really, you know, um, maybe I lost... A connection with a rock, a pro rock band, uh, scene these days, and I there are so many bands that I have never heard of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I must even confess that Rain. I'm just discovering Rain. And it really amazes me how fresh the sound is, and uh, I really like the music. So congrats on that too. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, John. Did you have any formal training before you began playing in different bands? <laughs> no, at school uh, I played trumpet. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, in the, the orchestra. I mean, I loved uh, jazz. My dad was a big 
jazz fan, my son, who's called Louis, after Louis Armstrong. He's a spitting image of Louis Armstrong, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, uh, it was literally wanting to play um, and and just picking up. Uh, someone else was better at guitar than me, so I played bass, you know. <laughs> and I played bass on a six-string guitar with the top two strings taken off for many years. And then I, I worked all summer in a factory to buy myself a bass while my girlfriend went traveling <laughs> okay. and uh, just went from there. And then I remember uh, going to university in, um, I was about, uh, uh, gosh, 19 or so. And Duran Duran, who were from Birmingham, where I'm from, were playing the university that Christmas. And they hired the uh, student hall to rehearse in before the gig. And I used to sneak in and watch them rehearsing. And I thought, this is it. This is what I want to do. <laughs> so you were like 19, 19 or something back? Yeah, back. that's right. That's right. So, you know, that that was the, the turning point. I thought, I, I you know, it just grabbed me. It, in much the same way as, you know, IQ's music. When I first heard IQ, it just grabbed me. And I fell in love with, with the band. I fell in love with music and playing the bass when I saw Duran Duran and John Taylor. I thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we've had some very sad news about uh, Simon LeBond these days, or who, who one of the members is not quite, it's not very well in health. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Andy Taylor, isn't it, the guitarist? Andy Taylor, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. Uh, now, you've been in, in so many different bands, uh, JD's. We, I used to play JD's a lot on Futuro. I, did, uh, I, did, I picked uh, the beginning and the end. Uh, no, that was the second song we ever played. First was, yeah. um, oh, what's the opening track called? Uh, then we played, uh, well, City IQ, Walking. City yeah. Walking, yeah, that's the right one, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, and it also was, as what I was saying about Rain, it has such a um, sparkling uh, quality to the music, <laughs> it's so different from what you were uh, keeping in mind as prog rock, it's yeah. like uh, very, very nice to hear, it's very, uh, um, it's a listening in a, in a good manner, in a good manner, uh, like uh, maybe I'm using the wrong term, but it was very friendly music within <laughs> rock. Yeah, yes. Well, it's interesting what you say there and what you're saying about modern progressive bands. I mean, I'm, I, I know there are a great number of really good progressive bands around there, but I try not to listen to other progressive bands because I don't want to be influenced by other progressive bands. I remember going on tour with Spock's Beard a couple of times with, with uh, Frost, uh, and and others and thinking you know Dave Miros what a great bass player and some of the stuff he was doing and I still find myself playing some of the stuff you know, <laughs> that, that I heard him play then and I don't want to do that I don't want to copy progressive bands now so you know I, I look into other music jazz or dance or uh, uh, um, anything really just different things because if you think about it you know when the big bands that we all refer to started out you know, yes, CLP, Genesis, uh, Pink Floyd, they didn't have any references in that way. They didn't have other progressive bands to say, oh, we're going to do that. They took what was there. You know, you look at Keith Emerson, you can see a lot of Dave Brubeck in there, that jazz approach, you know, and that's that's the right thing. And for example, very much with Rain, that's what we've tried to do. Yeah. Uh, well, they also had classical music, didn't they? Uh, I think that inspired them a lot. Yeah, yeah. some of them. Like, particularly comes out in the European progressive rock, doesn't yeah. it? You know, that sort of, the, the American uh, uh, culture and background is very much blues and jazz, and that's fantastic, whereas, you know, European is symphonic, and you get that. Exactly. In, in, in yeah. Now, for those of, of, of the people who are watching us, uh, I wanted to mention also bands you've been in, Arena and Frost, that I was really, you know, impressed with. Uh, what gives a band the right chemistry so everyone involved gets his own best? Uh, because every band is a different story. Uh, I know being a musician, being just a, a music passion, a music fan, it's difficult for me to understand what, when you say, oh, this is it, this is what we have to do, but then you do different things in, from one band to the next, I hope, I, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's really difficult. I mean, you know, um, one of my favorite bands is Rush. And oh. I'm sure a lot of your listeners too. Sure. Uh, and the reason for that is, you know, that they all were on the same path for so many years. They all wanted to do that. And when one couldn't do it, okay, you step back. But it was always there, you know. And it's so hard to find that in a group of four or five more musicians. You know, everybody is in the same place and wanting to do that. When bands start out, 
you know most of the bands i've been in when they start out they're in that field and then things move and change you know and you either adapt to that or, or you say oh you know this isn't working for me <laughs> and that's what's happened to me many times down the, the, the years you know i i the, the way i look at music now is it has to be fun i have to enjoy it because you know the the I, if, if I never played another note, I'd be very happy with what I'd done. You know, that I think I'd be involved in some fantastic stuff. Um, you know, if I'd have done one of those bands, it would have been brilliant. But to be involved in so many, you know, even Uriah Heep, you know, all of that, that music, it's fantastic to have that. I, I um, wasn't, yeah, I'm sorry. I was amazed to see that you were involved with Uriah Heep back in 2013, I guess. How soon can you become familiar with the band's repertoire, that, that big band? <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was that was a weird one. I mean, we used to have this game in IQ called Band X, right? Okay. And the game was uh, name a band that everybody knows, but nobody can name any of their songs. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, and, and Uriah Heap were one of those bands. You know, sorry for all the Uriah Heap fans. I'm a big fan now. <laughs> Just at the time. Um, and so I had a phone call from Mick Box saying, you know, uh, I've been recommend, you know, you've been recommended to us. Uh, are you, you know, uh, because Trevor, the bass player, was ill. We need someone to stand in while we find out what we're doing. And I said to him, Mick, you know, I know you're, not, I know you're a fantastic band, but I don't know the music. Can I have a listen to it over the weekend and come back to you? And he said, John, it's like this. He said, we're playing you uh, Tel Aviv in three weeks. I said, Mick, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had three weeks to learn this repertoire. Yeah. And then, you know, three weeks time we were playing in Tel Aviv. Uh, sold out audience about 2,000 people live on national radio. <laughs> wow, no pressure. Nice, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My own personal anecdote is I used to watch Uriah Heap on TV. That was very rare because in Chile we have very little exposure to music mm -hmm. at all, especially on television. And it, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the black and white television days, like the mid 70s. So they yeah. used to, to show Gypsy here, the live version, which is amazing. They, they were always amazing with that one. I don't know yeah. if you had to play Gypsy with them in Tel Aviv. Did you, did you play? That's a long number. That was one of the most famous ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, maybe. No, maybe. The long one we used to play that uh, was July morning, which is like a ten. Sure. Sure. Like, yeah. oh. That's another hit. <laughs> now you were you were saying, uh, John, that uh, sometimes you feel that some things are not working in, within a band. Uh, I paid attention to the fact that you were only well. Uh, the the band founder decided to dissolve Frost uh, mm. at a moment, and then uh, I was wondering what what happened. Uh, you, you were invited to come in again, and you were already busy. Yeah, we we, we did uh, the first album uh, uh, and toured yeah. with Spock's Beard, which you know it was, I remember hearing that and thinking this is astonishing. You know, if I wasn't involved with it, I'd go and buy it. You know. Uh, um, and we toured that, and we had big plans. We could do this, we could do that, we could do the other, you know. And then, you know, it was Jem's baby. He said, "No, uh, that's it," and he stopped it. And then, you know, okay, well, that was good. And then, twelve months later or so, the call. We wanted to do another album, and so we did um, experiments in mass appeal. But you know, it all got very fraction and split. And um, I remember we got offered a Dream Theatre tour, supporting Dream Theatre, six weeks in America, mm -hmm. or six weeks in Europe, or both if we wanted to. And you know, th this is why I'm in music, is to, to go out and play music. You know? And I remember seeing it, it came, you know, because I, I did a lot, I do do a lot of the business for bands, seeing it and saying, oh, that would have been nice. <laughs> I knew straight away we weren't going to do it, you know, and uh, it, it all got very, you know, um, Various things. I just thought, now I've had enough of this. Uh, you know, it's the same sort of thing. You know, I mean, uh, again, wonderful band, brilliant band, Frost. But you know, Amazing. the excitement. Yeah. yeah, the excitement was that when it starts. Sometimes that's th there is a moment for bands. You know, and I'm so glad I was involved then. You know, uh, uh, and um, you can you can go on for a long time with bands, and it will never match that moment. You know, how many. Uh, um, uh, fans of music say, oh, that was the period of any band, you know, it was fragile or close to the edge and nothing else matters. Well, yeah, but it does. <laughs> but, you know, really? and so, yeah, I was in the moment that mattered and that, that worked for me. Good. Now, uh, I, of course, everyone watching this will want to know, possibly, if you already maybe have commented on this, uh, when and how did you join IQ and what uh, 
that made you take the decision to leave? How did things happen in IQ? Um, well, IQ, um, I, I uh, um, actually, a bit of background, I'd finished playing music, I thought, you know, about 27 or whatever, that's it, you know, I was playing in various bands, it's not going to come to anything, I played with Angie Bowie, David Bowie's ex-wife, but that's it, it's all over now, and I, I stopped playing, and then I got the offer to play with a band called Ark, and Ark were a progressive band, and it was through the studio where we'd rehearsed with Angie Bowie, uh, and so... Uh, got in touch with them, loved it, ended up playing 70 gigs a year with wow. Ark. Uh, a lot of shows, a lot of were supported at Bikes in Holland, and, uh, and it was just really taking off. And then they, uh, right towards the end of my time with Ark, uh, we had sport shows with IQ uh, on the Are You Sitting Comfortably tour. And what had happened was that, um, you know, being a, a sort of progressive band at the end of the 80s, People used to come and say, oh, you remind me of so-and-so. And, and I used to get people saying, you remind me of IQ. And I'd never heard mm -hmm. of IQ. And so I said to this one guy, I said, okay, what's the best album? And he said, buy the wake. The wake is, is wonderful. Okay, I'll buy the wake. So I bought the wake from a shop and taped it. And I used to play it on my car stereo every day going to work. And I just fell in love, you know, do do dum dum do dum <laughs> you know and the whole thing about it was it wasn't like you know uh prog had become which was all you know elves and fairies and magicians and <laughs> yeah. castles and dragons it, yeah yeah exactly it was it was visceral it was you know about people it was dark it was yeah. menacing and i, I loved it yeah. And so when we yeah. got the chance to support iq on the i sitting comfortable to comfortably to with uh arc it was brilliant and so anyway um i kept in touch with uh ann fox mike's sister who was doing the merch she used to come and see arc a few times got on very well and then when les marshall sadly died who'd taken over from timmy so i remember uh emailing ann and saying, i'm so sorry to hear about this and i'd love to play with with uh, IQ and she said you'll never leave IQ, uh, I'd never leave Ark and I said well, I've already left Ark I'd, I'd left because they turned into a sort of Guns and Roses type man mm -hmm. and so we had a um, a, a rehearsal together and, and, and uh, Paul Cook wasn't even there the drummer on my rehearsal was Steve Christie wow <laughs> <Jay -less. laughs> yeah. there's a fact for you uh, uh, and um, yeah and then we had a party afterwards and I'm saying to people is that okay all right nobody ever said anything until about 18 years later <laughs> I just kept turning up. Um, so, yeah, and why did I leave? Um, I mean, IQ, I, I loved IQ. I love IQ. Um, music, wonderful. And I was so glad to be a part of that. You know, how many people get to join a band that they love? <laughs> what, an, what a wonderful thing. Um, but towards the end of it, there were various things. I had various personal problems. My marriage was falling apart. Uh, my business, you know, I couldn't, can't earn a living out of music. My business uh, was hit by the recession, you know, in 2008. Uh, I ended up losing a lot of money, so an incredible amount of pressure from that. Um, uh, various things. And, and one of the big things as well, though, was that I also thought, I don't want to be doing the same thing for the next 10 years. You know, I mean, IQ only plays a limited number of gigs. I've gone from 70 gigs a year with ARC to maybe 10 gigs a year with IQ if we were lucky. They were great gigs, but it's very small. And that's why I always played with other bands because I, yeah, I needed to play, you know, I wanted to play. Um, and so I thought, you know, if, if we do 10 shows a year, maybe five of those will be the same sorts of venues. We'd stop doing tour buses anymore. We weren't doing those things. So I thought, I want to do different things. Uh, you know, and it's like a break. It really was like a breakup in a, a relationship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a marriage or something. And so, um, yeah, yeah. Um, Mark Westworth was leaving uh, the show, uh, uh, I think it was, was it 2010 or something, just for Christmas, and I didn't say anything to anybody until after the show, uh, and I said, that's it, I've, I've, I've done, anybody's like, what? <laughs> but um, it's, I mean, you know, always uh, part of me thinks, oh, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm a Pisces, you think both ways. But I've done so many different things since then. It's been brilliant. I mean, I did get to play with IQ again in 2019, uh, Lorelei in Germany, big festival, 10,000 people or whatever it was. And it was wonderful. My, my partner, Alex K. 
came along with me, my, my, uh, uh, my wife now, mm -hmm. and uh, she saw what it was all about. You know, I talked to her about, you know, what I'd done and she heard the music and seen pictures and so on. But then to see all these people and to, to you know, oh, it's just wonderful to meet all these people again. Yeah. So that was a nice coder on it. Is she a music fan? What one does she like? All sorts, all sorts. I mean, when we first met, uh, you know, computer dating guys, big up on that one. Um, <laughs> we met and, and we knew that we got something in common because our topic of conversation was Frank Zappa. <laughs> and it just went from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope, I suppose. Right. Um, now, is it usual to be part of more than one band these days in the rock scene? Uh, I, I've been telling you that I'm amazed to see the, uh, you know, amazing amount uh, a number of bands we have these days. Uh, but uh, I see that many bands share musicians, like you find this guy here and then also there. So uh, it, you would not have never imagined, you know, John Anderson singing with Jethro Tal and vice versa. So those were the days where you have the very uh, specific uh, lineups and these days seems to be different like the business i don't know there's something about it uh, or maybe you're very good people very good friends so yeah you know i i think that the thing with it for me is you know if i had one band like i say that wanted to you know do as much as it possibly could that would do me you know, I, I'm not, I'm not a complete tart. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, it, so you know, if, like as I say, ah, oh, seventy gigs a year. Now those seventy gigs, we, we would so probably play one or two nights a week. We would rehearse a couple of nights a week. We play a football together another night. You know, so uh, uh, most of the time we were together. It's like a gang, and the fans were part of that too. We play football against a bunch of you know fans that used to come up. Uh -huh. So um, you know, it, it was a real full-time thing but the bands these days aren't you know it's very rare you, and you only need one person in any band who can't commit to the same way as everybody else and so that slows things down it trims things back and uh, um you know I, I would be very happy playing with a band that i loved as much as i could and that would be my true love and that would do it <laughs> but it doesn't work like that so you know at the moment i'm doing uh, rain i'm playing with pat sanders with drifting sun uh, I'm playing uh, with uh, uh, an Indian uh, psychedelic fusion band called Nataraja. With Nataraja, band yeah. Members. I read about uh, that, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm playing some shows with a band called Quill, who are a Midlands band. I'm playing with um, uh, Steve Bingham, who played violin with Tim Boness. Uh, uh, and, yeah, anything that comes along, you know, available for hire. You know, anybody wants <laughs> me. I yeah, do yeah. a lot of sessions for people. I enjoy it. You know, I'm writing a couple of albums with various people that will hopefully see the light of the day at some point. So, yeah, it, it, it's if, if you can't do it all with one band, then I still want to be doing it. You know? I still want to do the same amount of music. It just has to be spread wider. Have you ever calculated how many hours a day you play or think about music or you can't be without it? Because, you know, it seems that it's, almost a compulsion but i understand it's a very positive compulsion for us the fans <laughs> yeah. not enough <laughs> I, um, yeah, I mean you know uh, I, I, the, the whole thing for me was playing live i love playing live you know that that the moment and there are moments of, of uh, transcendence sometimes when you're playing when it just takes off and you know you're almost not there and, and things are happening and you're watching it happen it's very very strange yeah. um but uh um you know i've got more into recording now now i can do home recording which i learned with rain over the lockdown um you know that means i can spend more time working things out i remember um when we did subterranea with iq uh, i had the idea for the riff for the track subterranea yeah. Uh, and I remember playing it and really having to convince people that that was the right thing. You know, that's, it's good, it's good. You know, work with me, work with me. Uh, and oh, I'm not sure. Oh, no, let me do it. Let me let me get it down. And then you listen to it as a, as a piece. And of course, it's a real, you know, I think a real standout thing now. Whereas, you know, with when I can uh, sit down on my own and spend as much time as I want without the clock ticking or, you know, the, 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 the till yeah. ringing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is my idea. What do you think? And generally, people go, oh, I get it. I get what you're trying to do. <laughs> so it was an interesting forced situation, a productive situation. Yeah. Yeah. And that whole first Rain album, Singularity, came out of that. You know, we never met the four of us together before 
we'd recorded the album. <laughs> yeah, have you already played with the band live these days? I mean, yeah, because yeah. it came out, yeah, 2020 came out. The record came out in 2020, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have played, you know, we haven't met since, and we played since uh, live, we played in Europe uh, and such. But um, yeah, it was, it's difficult. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, by the way, people can visit Bandcamp and check their... I was amazed that there, is no, there are no tracks. You can just buy the, the CD or, yeah, but there are no tracks available as some of uh, the bands. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, on, on Bandcamp. Is that what it, uh, I'm yeah. not completely That's sure. Bandcamp. Yeah. 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 I, I, we have to do that. There's no problem to do that. But I mean, we have videos up. There's um, yes, a yes. video up for Dandelion. Singularity. Singularity. Yeah, there's a song called Dandelion, uh, which uh, people can look at, which is uh, a recording from Singularity. Right. Uh, well, I was checking the uh, the band members, Rob Grocut, whose voice I really, really love. I don't know where this guy came from. I just, by the way, I just sent him a, a short message. He doesn't know who I am. And I mentioned <laughs> that we were going to have a Zoom meeting with you, but uh, I think it was too late. And uh, I was missing Andy. I, I remember the first time we ever considered this meeting, We you said that Andy would be... In, I mean, would be interested in the meeting. Maybe we can oh, do it some other day. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I mean, Andy yeah. would be very happy to do so. I mean, I know uh, Andy's got can, uh -huh. can tell you lots of things. He's. I think he's actually in the studio at the moment. He okay. teaches children as well to the kids. All right. So, so you are with him. You, you are right. with Andy Edwards on drums, and uh, Miron uh, is the name of the guy who plays the guitar. He comes from Hey yeah. Jester. I still have to check Hey Jester to be honest. And uh, yeah, uh, that is a really good album. I have to to get a hold of and play it on my online show one of these days. So Thank congrats you. for that. I'll, I'll yeah. Please send you a copy if you give me a date. Oh good. no, please not. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, uh, are you, is there any album on the way? Uh, yes. Well, uh, I'm in the studio tomorrow, finishing the mix on the second album. Actually, wow. Uh, so that's good. But yeah, uh, Rob Groke, uh He's got a famous background. His dad. Was Kelly Groker from Electric Light Orchestra. I read about that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with that really. Uh, with that, with that guy, but oh. uh, no, no. Another bass player. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now uh, something about band come again. I was uh, amazed to see the many tags that there are for the band. It says just uh, fusion, progressive rock, rock, prop, progressive metal. Pro uh, do you care about labels these days? I mean, because these uh, platforms, these, uh, you know, Spotify and all the rest uh, almost lead the listener to where they are standing well, all the time. Somebody said to me the other day uh, yeah. that yeah. he was post labelist, which he said is actually also a label. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, it's difficult. I think I think the point about those labels is that you know if people are into that particular label, they might listen to the music. Yeah. I, I don't like labels particularly. I mean, you know, and I agree with a lot of people who say there's only two types of music: you like it or you don't like it. And if you don't like it because it's a particular type, you're missing out on yeah. so much. It's just and, music. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I had the like chance to interview Fish at the radio station once when he came here back in 1990, 1996 must have been. Uh, he played two shows, great shows. And I remember when I was talking about him, uh, uh, to him about Grendel, which is one of my favorite old tracks by Marillion. He said, oh, he, he started discussing the regressive progressive thing. So I, I felt he meant to say that he didn't really like this progressive tag at all. And I don't know, there are so many different views. Uh, mm. So what do you call rain? Rain is just music, isn't it? Just rock. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the thing I like about rain, it, it, you know, I mean, okay, okay, what's progressive music? You know, this is one where we should each have a pint in our hands, Christian. You know, and you know, you could talk about this sort of thing or not. What is progressive music? You know, you, and and there are so many bands now that are kind of embracing that. You know, Tool, Radiohead, bands that you know ten years ago would not want to have been called that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing I like about Rain is I, I think the, the way I look at progressive music, it's about the structure of songs. You know, the, the, it's not just a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, middle A, verse, chorus. Exactly. Yeah. You know? it, it, it's how you develop a song. Uh, and so in that way, yeah, I think it is. But I think the interesting thing about Rain is we purposely made it that you could dance to it. You can tap your foot to it. You know, it's it's not you're not going to break something by trying to move, <laughs> and it's nice to see people at uh, gigs. You know, being able to get into it. 
Yeah. And, and, and yeah, it's it, yeah. I have no problem with that. I, I don't like things, you know, or oh, they're very serious for the sake of being serious, and you know, we're uh, uh, telling you from on high what you should think or how you should be. You know, this is or the the trouble in our souls. This is, you know, it's mm -hmm. music to enjoy. Now, there's one of the songs, "Devil's Will Rain." Is that that doesn't represent what the band? I mean, what do you think? I mean, we are living in a very uh, complicated world these days. Uh, there's so much uh, uh, negativism, so to say, uh, coming from everywhere. And um, I don't know who, who writes the lyrics and what's the inspiration, but uh, it was a special name of the song to, to find. Well, well, the interesting thing with uh, Devils is yeah. that, and, and, and one of the things that Rain does quite regularly is Mirren had written a set of vocals for that and Rob had written a set of vocals, and Andy put them together, and so you get each of them singing their own part, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, and um, Singularity is is an album of its time, in the same way as ever, when we wrote Ever, it was very much about what was going on in the world for, for IQ. Ever was about, uh, um, you know, it was an uncertain time for the band. The band had lost its record contract. It just got back together with Pete, I was the new bass player, you know, and we were trying to see where this went. So we were uns unsure. There were people close to the band who had, had died, you know, Jeff Mann uh, and, and people who, uh, uh, you know, their fathers, mothers of people in the band, you know. So it, it, that, that affected the sound of the album and the lyrical content. Singularity uh, with Rain is in the same way, it's very much of that time of the pandemic, you know, when we were all unable to see the people we cared about, you know, we were uh, uh, isolated. And so it, it's about, it, it's very much about, you know, that and, and conspiracy and people telling you one thing in order to uh, um, um, gain control really over the way that you think people, you know, oh, it's not that, it's this for some ulterior motive, when actually, Things are very simple, I think. You know, what we try and do is we put layers of meaning on things. You know, to me, life is about being nice to people around you and trying to pe treat people equally, you know, wherever you're from, whoever you are. Uh, and um, the, the idea that some people have got huge amounts of cash or huge amounts of control or can tell you to hate other people because they're different, that, that's, yeah. life doesn't, isn't about that. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted to mention some names that you have uh, to do with, and I, uh, people that I admire, of course, John Wetton uh, from, uh, you know, well, King Cream from the UK, so many other, Asia, and there's another guy who I really admire, who's Tim Bowness, uh, that I discovered when I was playing uh, Porcupine Tree, then I went to what Stephen Wilson was doing, uh, where else apart from Porcupine Tree, then I found No Man, I know that you played in Tim Bowness's band at some point in time, and also, I think, uh, well, you did uh, something with Paul Menel from uh, IQ. Uh, what, what, in, a, in a couple of words, how, what would you say about John Wetton? And uh, we, we never met the guy. I mean, I couldn't. We never could see him live. Here. Or I think we did once, but I wasn't there. Uh, what do you remember about these guys? Oh, John Wetton. What? Yeah. What an astonishing bass player. What? 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 I mean, he was a really nice guy. I mean, I mean um, John had his demons. <laughs> Um, usually alcohol related, but uh, you know, he, he was a, a, such a lovely, lovely man. He, he had no airs or graces about him, you know. I, and I remember uh, doing a tour with him uh, and uh, he, a huge show in The Hague. And John was playing acoustic guitar on the shows. And Martin Orford was playing uh, keyboards. And Martin said, You need a bass player for some songs. So I tour managed and also played bass for John. Uh, uh, and you know, playing in front of a hundred thousand people or something in the Hague, <laughs> quite an experience. Clambering on top of Keith Moore's stack, uh, uh, his amplifiers. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it was you know, it, it was it was a good 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 guy, uh, 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 John. Uh, and mm. uh, sad loss, he died too young. Yeah, yeah. And uh, um, now I want to mention uh, now that we're coming to possibly an end of our first meeting. Nataraya is the name of the band you're playing with next week, I guess, so coming soon. <laughs> Nataraya, so that people can check that out. Nataraja, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a guy from India, isn't he? No, no, he's uh, 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 he's a, an English guitarist 
he plays in uh, music from India or traditional. Yes, yes. yes. You know, he, he uh, what a, God, I, I, we played together uh, a couple of weeks back. Astonishing, absolutely astonishing. And it, it, he plays the guitar like a sitar. Oh. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's Andy and myself. And we have a guy playing modular synth. So, you know, with all these uh, 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 analog sequences and sounds going on. Uh, and it's uh, a large part of it is improvised. So, I mean, it's going to be amazing. I'm really looking forward to that. You know, the, the uh, rehearsals we had so far have been something else. Something, And this is the, the joy of it, Christian, you know, coming across somebody who I would never have met the guy. But Jack is such a lovely guy, uh, uh, so down to earth. But what a talent. What an amazing yeah. talent. You know, his, his guitar, uh, he's, it's strong. It's, it's an ordinary Fender Strat. Strung with the three top strings from a, a, a guitar, and then three drone strings like you would have on a sitar. Yeah, and so, I'm watching him play. Mm -hmm. How they do <laughs> so, it? Yeah. yeah. Well, so there's a magic. We have to magic that happens. <laughs> yeah. Now, finally, my final question: um, You have a hobby. What do you do when you're not playing music? You like reading, watching movies, walking, uh, doing sports. <laughs> um, my my main hobby, I guess, is history. Oh, look at uh, that! I'm fascinated by history, okay. and um, again, you know, I'm I'm a, quite a lefty, quite left wing. I'm quite uh, uh, you know for social justice and stuff like that. And, and what fascinates me is, you know, the influence, for example, of the British Empire on on the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and not for good necessarily, not for good, but the impact of colonialism, India. the East India Company. Australia, yeah that has had throughout the world uh, and you know i think it's very easy for people in england to be you know oh royal britannia and all that but you know you need to look at the fact that we gained a lot of that wealth by actions that weren't very <laughs> were quite reprehensible let's put it like that uh, uh, and uh, um, you know i think we have to have a certain humility in the way we treat the world and we deal with people going forward on the basis it's that thing if you don't understand the past then you know you can't understand your present, uh, mm -hmm. and I I'm fascinated by how we all got to where we are today. That's my big hobby. In a, in one word, what makes you happy? What makes you afraid? <laughs> what makes me happy? Um, well, the biggest thing that makes me happy is Alex, my partner. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, I I love music. I love playing live. Sorry, I can't give you one word. I'm sorry. Okay. Please. And about, uh, uh, fears? You have any those, fears? Uh, those moments on stage where it, <laughs> that's wonderful. Okay, uh, I've been with friends and and, and 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 you know that's a wonderful thing. I get. Well, it's been fantastic to have the chance to finally uh, talk to you for the first time, uh, and uh, I'm glad that you could find the time. So thanks so much for uh, your your time, your interest, and congratulations on what you've been doing all these years. That makes so many people happy. One of them, uh, myself. I will spend some time listening to Rain and looking forward to the next album. So thanks a lot, sir. Thank you so much, Christian. It's been wonderful to see you again. <laughs> yeah, after 20, well, how, 1999, wow. Was, yeah, we, haven't, uh, we haven't changed a bit there, have we? Uh, no, no, not at all. How, <laughs> even, how, how can you even mention that? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, you see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so thanks a lot. Take good care, play on, and give your best. I know you will. I'll do my best. Thank you, Christian. Bye.